We remember the families and friends and all the wonderful people of the Carolinas. We ask you to be with them and comfort them as they deal with Hurricane Florence. Father, may your peace be with us all. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And here today to honor America with the singing of our national anthem, please welcome Sierra Black. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs burst Sin City. Let's hear what this town is all about from Mr. Las Vegas, Wayne Newton. Mr. Newton, would you like to hit or stand? Would you say that one more time? Would you like to hit or would you like to stand? Did you hear that? The gentleman wants to know if I'm going to take a chance. I'm here in Las Vegas, the greatest city in the world. That was born out of the idea of taking chances, right, Mark? And he wants to know if I'm going to go for it here. Ladies and gentlemen, he did not need to ask. Whoever you are, no matter what brings you to my town, you don't come here to play it safe. You don't come here to go halfway. No, no, no. You come to Las Vegas to push the limits, to take the risk, to put everything on the line and leave on top of the world. Now, if you're a performer, someone who feeds off the rush of high stakes, the adrenaline of everybody watching, the energy of competing to be the best. This is the perfect place for you. You can't come here and play scared to play not to lose. You have to push aside your fears, your hesitations, and just let it ride. Because folks, that's how you win. You know what I'm gonna say, right? Brian, hit me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Las Vegas. Man, I love this town. <laughs> and who will let it ride today? How about that? Wayne Newton getting us ready. Now that's an inspirational speech before the start of the playoffs. Martin Truex Jr. continues to lead this field, just drove away from Keselowski, but back in the field. Look at William Byron up against the wall, trying to make time, contact though. Gonna have to stay off that wall, Rick.
Caution has just come out. William Byron, a lot of damage to the right side of that car and the rear. William was running in 22nd position. Take a replay, uh, take a look at the replay here. It's already in the wall. Didn't get to see exactly how that started. But he made hard contact with the right rear quarter. It's going to hurt the side force on that car. And if they can't even get going to finish this race, I think there'll be a handful out there the rest of the day. That looks bad enough. It may. Yeah, that might end his day. They drive right on the trailer. Yeah. But again, they only have a set amount of time to repair this and then get back out onto the track to try to make minimum speed. Rick, this is the 24 wheel. His teammate Alex Bowman in the 88 had that uncontrolled tire. He's recovered somewhat up to the 15th position. Having such a great day, had scored 10 points in the first and second stage uh, in total. And the big story this weekend, all across America, is the hurricane taking place right now in the Carolinas to help people that have been affected by Hurricane Florence. Visit redcross.org or text Florence to 90999 to donate $10 to American Red Cross Hurricane Florence Relief. And we mentioned how Hurricane Florence came aground at Wilmington, took a very interesting path there, but now it's circling around Charlotte where probably 95% of the teams in NASCAR are based right in that area. And they are getting a lot of precipitation dumped on them right now and a lot of flooding taking place there. So always thinking about those in the Carolinas right now in that eye of the storm. In Las Vegas, the pits. His car doesn't have quite the speed on the takeoff on the on stickers. He doesn't have quite the speed. As you see, he's being hounded by the 22 of Logano for second place. He's wanting them long green flag runs so he can move that. 42, it doesn't look like it as the 12 closes in. Maybe a little too early for the top yet. We mentioned earlier with the Ram trucks proven to last, the tires and trying to avoid tire issues. So Please remain standing as United States Navy Chaplain Lieutenant James Block offers tonight's invocation. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for today. As Americans, we enjoy freedoms others can only dream of, freedoms paid for in blood, tears, and sacrifice. Thank you for the men and women who've served our country well, giving their all, taken prisoner, or even going missing in action. May we, like you, never forget them. We ask your protection on those who will race, serve, and support here today. Thank you for always hearing us. All this we pray in your wonderful name. Amen. Blaney's on pit road in the 12. That car has been loose. It was way tight in the first run, so they found the switch. It's just been flipped too far. I'm going to tell you what, Rick. It's one thing for Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Brian Patty, say, hey, this is our best strategy. For Clint Boyer, for Ryan Blaney, for Joey Logano, to call your car on pit road, to give up a caution right now. These guys are laps down. They're definitely going to lose points in this stage. This is a huge call from on top of the pit box. This takes guts. This forced me to the TV booth. I mean, this is too much. This is too much. A decision like this is huge. Will it pay off? That's the, the question. Well, they got to have it go are, green, right? It right. has to go green. And now the question is, Clint Boyer, do it. Show me how good this car can be. You have 50 lap pressure tires. The closing rate's going to be huge. You're going to have to work through traffic. It doesn't matter just how fast you are. Drivers, what's it like when you're a second faster than the field, picking and choosing as you work through traffic? It's awesome, man. It's so much fun. <laughs> but listen, they know that they know what's going on, too. They understand that if a caution comes out, they could be in major trouble. So it's a lot of fun. It's just great passing everybody like that. But they are aware of the danger of a caution coming out. And somebody that's been benefited by this and moving up the charts for these guys fitting is Jimmy Johnson. However, he is still run. Kyle Larson down. He just passed Ryan Newman. Really strong recovery from Jimmy Johnson after that penalty. Some strength, once again, we're seeing from Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, and Jeff, that speeding penalty on pit road was... The... 
And now, for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshal, head coach of the Carolina Panthers, Ron Rivera. Hey, race fans! Y'all ready to roll ball? All right, then here we go! Drivers, start your engines! Back on Radio 1. Final got a copy now. Keep fire up whenever you're ready. Guys, sir. Fire up. You want to lead the first lap the first time at the Roval, man. That's, that's historic stuff. You want to be the first guy to lead a lap here. Kyle Larson's going to put a ton of pressure on Kurt Busch. Two by two, they go. Kyle Larson on the inside. Chase Elliott on the outside. They field approaching the Geico restart zone and back underway. Great jump by Kyle Larson. Look down there on the inside. Amarola making it three wide. Oh. AJ Allmendinger in it. Look what it does to these guys on the outside. Eric Jones and a few others. Had some all that work done by Eric Jones in one corner, gone away. As the leaders stretch out, I'm looking back two or three rows at 47. He's still not giving up, guys. Still too wide through the infield. Well, you said, what are tires going to matter? Well, an aggressive driver with new tires we're seeing right now can make a difference. Yeah, he's also a guy without a job, trying to, trying to find a new job. This is an interview today for him. Look at this, still making moves. Oh. That white car. Oh. Heading up onto the race, the big racetrack now. Great job getting up through that pack. Now, Eric Jones doesn't think so. He got put three <laughs> wide and moved out. But Yeah, few were disappointed in the job that A.J. Allmendinger did, but he's thinking for himself right now. Well, let's be clear, Rick. That was plus eight or nine spots, one trip through the infield, one trip on new tires, and he's passed eight or nine cars, and I don't think the 47's done with nine to go in this stage. Look at the 20 right here. You mentioned they got stacked up. Dale Jr., well, the upper nose of that 20 car definitely smashed in. Let's take a look at it. We got the replay right here of that restart. Jones way over there on the outside. All the makes three wide. That forces Jones to have to make a decision on. And here's the roof camera. And just running the back the of Byron. Making it three wide right there. I'm not sure he wasn't wheel hot, but you hear Jimmy out in front of him, he sees William Byron. Another yeah, position. And I missed what when I said done for the day, everybody's working in a one-stop strategy, right? The guys that have already pitted, they only have to pit one more time. Guys like Jimmy Johnson. What's wrong with William Byron here? Slow on the track. Yeah, out of fuel. Potentially out of fuel. Know. Where did he pit last? Byron pitted on lap 22. He should have plenty of fuel right now. You have to wonder if he was just helping his teammate, the 48, nah, trying to let him got, go. He's got something going on. They have he's a tire like, coming apart or yeah, something. He, it looks like the right front's a little bit low, Steve. See it bouncing the car? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah. Right oh, and he oh, the Amarola. Amarola, that's Amarola. Amarola avoiding it, gets into the wall hard. And now if I'm any other car with the 24 and a flat tire, I'm going to come to pit road if I think I can yep. make it. Pit this time, pit this time. Heavy damage on Eric Almarola. This is a car that we thought just had to gain a few points. And he was doing a, just enough to get done what he needed to get done today. Right now he's showing that he would be 11 points to the good, but you can see the 24 going up the racetrack on the flat right front. Eric catches him and just hits the wall hard. And 24 has made it to pit road. If you're wondering if that car might bring out a yellow, he actually cut through the Legends car track portion of the <laughs> front straightaway to get to his pit box. Marty. And guys, Eric Amarola, they've asked him how the car is driving. He said it doesn't feel like there's a rub. You see William Byron on pit road, but championship implications for Eric Amarola. Looks like they are going to come down pit road here for the 10 car, but now they're debating. Now they're saying there's no smoke on the car. So now he said, the there you hear it, smoking on the banking. Now they're going to come down pit road. They came in with a 23-point cushion. They've done an excellent job here in round one, being so consistent. But Eric Almarola with damage, going to come here early before the end of stage two. As Junior mentioned, the 24 didn't come onto pit road the way he was supposed to, so he has a commitment line violation. He'll have to come back onto pit road. And Dale, you called it. That 24 car had a flat right front. These cars are so low, I couldn't tell it was flat. Perhaps neither could the 10, right? He had no idea the 24 was slowing up. Now we see on the bottom right of your screen the 10 of Eric Amarola come to the service of the pit crew, Marty. And see if they're going to do it. And Eric Amarola having to go around William Byron. And today's aerial coverage provided by Bank of America. A beautiful scene here at Charlotte Motor Speedway and the Roval. They have sold more tickets here than the past 10 years. So a great crowd on hand for today's race. 
And how about this name? William Byron won the race off of Pitt Road. The 24 team with an incredible stop. They said you could cut the course to avoid an accident. They don't feel it was an advantage. Boyer is on the inside. That's the line you want to be on restarts. And a race for the win as well. Keslowski on the inside. Larson on the outside. Back up through the gears they go. A little shove from Martin Trex Jr. And too hard through one. Keslowski, Larson both into the wall. They pile up and the Tums heartburn turn. Caution coming out again. Yeah, I just had no grip. We're going. My fault. Trevor Bain in the six also involved. We talked about these drivers. This is the first time they've been on old tires on restarts. You, the first time at this racetrack, you just don't have a reference to go by. And you heard Brad Keselowski say he just didn't have any grip. He overdrove it. Yeah, the tire is so hard for this surface to be able to handle what this load is. And when they go in there and you pass the brakes and the car starts sliding, that's it. You're going to hit the fence. 18 behind the wall. Brad Keselowski climbing out of his car. You talked about it, Jeff, the experience of this type of restart on old tires at this racetrack with that corner, just the lack of experience. You know, most every oval track that do this time and time again, they understand what the grip level is going to be. Brad Keselowski, they all launched really well. Nobody really spinning their wheels much. Brad's in trouble right there. He knows he's in trouble. Got the left front locked up, and now just nowhere for these guys to go. I think even the 18, he was in too deep. A lot of guys really did have a lot of trouble getting in that corner. That is so strange to have a, so many cars overshoot the same corner on restart. The understanding of grip, you know, you have to trust that the car, even I mean, they just, the 21, the 18. So we've had a lot of laps without a restart through that turn. Guys continuing to run that bottom preferred line and dirtying up that outside line. Look at our guys battling for that last spot, transferring to playoffs. What I'm worried about right here, Eric Amarola, he goes out of sight. Well, he gets caught up in. Seventy is tucked up tight with him here. Seventy is trying to come to the middle with the two. Still inside. Tight left, tight left. All right. Well, red flag has come out, and six laps to go. Parker again, but race leader Brad Keselowski, Kyle Larson into the wall. Many of the playoff contenders having a problem. Seven laps of this race, but what could have ended up being the final restart, turn one. And we're just uh, seeing Brad walk out of the care center, wondering uh, what happened to Ricky Stenhouse Jr., whose crash looked quite similar to Brad's. Brad's, yours, was on the restart. A lot of unknowns here today, and one of them was restarts on old tires at the end of the race. What happened? Yeah, I was just asking Ricky. I don't know. The whole field went down in turn one. It looked like and we all went straight, so I don't know. Maybe we all overdrove it, or maybe the track had something on it, I don't know, but uh, I got in the corner, I didn't fuck, I got in it. I, mean, I got in it hard, but not like ridiculously hard and just locked up and couldn't get the tire to unlock. So um, I felt really, really dumb when I hit the wall and then I got back in the care center and saw the replay and saw everybody kind of did the same thing. And I don't know, uh, just kind of frustrating, but uh, I really got to give a lot of credit to, to Paul Wolf and the, the team on the Lions Truck Parts for this. This car was a rocket. You know, I wrecked the car in practice, and we unloaded this car just for the race, and it was screaming fast. And uh, thought we were going to win today. Uh, just didn't, didn't come together. You see the cars that are involved in the wreck. We will give you the updated standings once they come back by the start-finish line because those have not been reset with everyone that was involved. Kyle Busch has been released from the infield care center on that last restart. Kyle, uh, what was so different about it as far as grip or anything else goes? Uh, we've just been out there the longest we had been on tires, and I guess all of us are just stupid. Don't know where to break for the corner considering uh, what our tires look like. And so we just all 
drove off into a 90 degree wall for something to do because we had nothing else better to do. So um, that kind of sucked, but I guess it's a good thing it didn't matter for us. That's right, coming in here with insurance, this is okay in one sense. I mean, you hate tearing up race cars and um, and whatnot, but I guess they're road course cars anyway, so you don't necessarily need them anytime soon. But overall, just, um, you know, not a good day for us. Uh, it was going to be a fine day. If we could have made it through that corner and had those other two guys out of our way, then it was a race between the 78 and us, but doesn't matter now. Kyle's done for the day. Had a good day going in the 18 until, Rick. Until that restart. And We pause in your presence to thank you for the greatest country in the world, the United States of America. We thank you for our military. We thank you for law enforcement. We thank you for our firefighters. We thank you for our EMTs. We thank you for those who protect our president, the Secret Service. We thank you for the chaplains that serve around this country faithfully. And now we ask you, as we always do, for a safe race, for a great race. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. And Jeff Gordon, a pretty good guy to get some advice from at this racetrack. A five-time winner here at the Monster Mile. Well, every driver wants the recipe on how to win a championship. We can look to the past champions for a few of the ingredients that one win this year but you see the crew running back into the garage obviously a, a huge mistake here getting the car set up for this race Steve I mean, it has to be a mistake I, Jeff and I were just discussing that up here I, I can't fathom I can't understand think of how many times the cars go on the racetrack it didn't, it didn't run more than 45 miles an hour for it to fall apart it had to be either some sort of crazy parts failure or some sort of just mechanical mistake but either way the field's bunching up. We're going to see the green flag without Jimmy Johnson. Well, we were riding. Replace the splitter or trying to replace the splitter. Actively working. Jimmy is still strapped inside the 48, so they're doing what they can to get him back out. But you've got to imagine the disappointment for this team at a place they thought they could show up and win. And now Jimmy's starting from the garage. Well, Kelly, thanks for the update. And I would imagine the splitter is your live race day companion. You can watch throughout the broadcast and even select alternate camera angles, or you can ride along with in-car video of your favorite drivers. Visit NASCAR.com slash drive or download the NASCAR mobile app today. Harvick still out front, has a second and a half lead over now Brad Keselowski, who has moved up to second. Has got by Kyle Busch back to third. Logano and Boyer are the top five. Logano's been able to pull away because of that. And it'll take, it'll take him a while to close that gap, Boyer to close that gap on Logano. On the bottom, it looks like he's coming to pit road. Yeah, I think he thinks he might have a tire issue. He's I slowed agree. way down. Why well, you got to pay attention to this pit road speed. We see so many times drivers overshoot pit road. Kyle won't run the game a little bit. We'll see here right here. And it's loose. It's going to make him loose as is, just getting close. That was fair. That's just rubbing. Rubbing's racing. Yeah. Rubbing is racing. And that's what Kevin Harvick just did. As long as you don't put me in the fence, I don't mind. Be able to figure out what was going on. You'll see Wesley Lape kind of come in there. What about that move, the ninja move to get inside the car? He's one of the smallest guys on the team. He wanted to confirm that, number one, it did not become disconnected. But number two, the track bar is indeed working for Kyle Busch. He thought for a while it was not, but it's working just fine. Bo and Luke Duke is what that reminded me of, watching him jump into that car right there. He said it was a little tight. I need a little magic here. I don't know if they got four specially matched tires on that last stop, but he's running well, Marty. Uh, good movie reference there, Dave. For Brad Keselowski, those two tires with Paul Wolf's call. Almirola, look at the traffic in front of him. Got to go low here under William Byron. Get that, by him pretty easily. And Junior, that's what you want as a driver. But this is the problem. Coming up off the corner, Jeff, he has to lift. He can't use all the throttle to get out of, up, up against the wall. You, just want, you want these guys out. So when this gets ready to restart, it will be a shootout. And Chase Elliott and Denny Hamlin are going to line up on the front row. And Rick, if you remember back to yeah, Martinsville yeah, a year behind. ago, there was a little bit of, and they're rolling now, so it's back to yellow but if you'll remember back to Martinsville this was 2017 Hamlin into the back of the 24 
Chase Elliott thought he was going to win that race. And Denny Hamlin had, well, some other ideas. That changed the attitude right there of Chase Elliott. And then Phoenix, toward the end of the season last year, into the wall goes the 11. 24 able to get by, and later the 11 wrecks out of the race, knowing that that was the way the 24 was going to race him. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats and join Cub Scout Pack 10 from Ellisville, Mississippi, as they perform the Pledge of Allegiance. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Hey guys, inside the Ricky Stenhouse Jr. car, you see the Thanks Mikey stickers. Those are for our director, Mike Wells. Today marks a big day for us at NBC Sports because it's the end of an era with Mike Wells doing his final NASCAR race. There you see him in our TV truck, live from the TV truck. For 37 years, no one has directed more motorsports television than Mike Wells. His first NASCAR race, 1981 at Rockingham Speedway. He's gone on to direct some of the most memorable moments in NASCAR history for NBC, ESPN, ABC, Turner Sports, and others. He's directed everything from Olympics to the NFL, but NASCAR racing has always been home. To those who know, Mikey is preamble to get the crew fired up before the race, still the best in the game, and his signature snap for a camera change is unmistakable. His mantle is filled with 21 Emmy Awards, but more importantly, his mark on this sport is indelible, literally inventing the way you see motorsports television. Mike's not going far. He'll still be at the helm with NBC Sports when we have the 103rd running at the Indianapolis 500 next May. We can't wait for that. Mike has always said, my job is to capture the moments. My friend, for 37 years, nobody's done it better than you. On behalf of the millions who have watched your pictures and from the thousands of us who have been blessed enough to call you a friend and work with you over these years, Mike Wells, we say thank you. And all the best to you and your lovely bride, Kathy, in your retirement. What an incredible job he has done for four decades, Mike Wells on his last race. The other thing we can expect, we can expect to see a lot of blocking. We saw at the race of Daytona in February, in, in July rather, Brad Keselowski got really upset. He said, William Byron made a block he shouldn't have made. He said, I'm not going to put up with that today, but all day long, if you're going to win this race, you see a run coming, you're going to have to pull in front of him. You have to stop that advance. That puts you and that line in danger, but there is no other way but to be aggressive. Yeah, there's a huge argument or discussion in the garage about what blocking is what what is blocking and what's not and in my opinion and a lot of other drivers opinion if you can make that move early to where the driver can prepare for it it's not a dirty block if you move it if you make the move late and the guy that you're blocking has nothing he can't do anything to survive it and he gets turned around off the bumper of the car behind him that is a that is a dangerous block yeah, that line is, you see four Stuart Haas cars, but when they did that, what also happened was it put four Hendrick cars in line as well. There's Jimmy Johnson trying to get to the back of William Byron in that yellow 24 car. Here comes Jimmy Johnson with some help from Chase Elliott. Great stop because all these teams, they found a way to work together. If somebody has a bad stop, it will... They really didn't make that move. Here goes Joey Logano trying to side draft that nine car, but the nine car jumped up on the outside of his teammate, William Byron. Let's see what the 22 does. He's going to move to the bottom and run that nine car out of the line. No, he's not. Now he's going with him. Suarez on the outside of the 21. He got a good side draft on Menard there, and he's got great help behind him in a fast car of Eric Almirola. This could be great for this outside line to finally prevail. And look at everybody moving up. William look at Byron. see that coming. Their spotters are telling them to get up the racetrack. William Byron saw it Byron. Coming. William Byron with a little bit of a lead on the two car, but good, good. They're all together on the bottom. Good organization there to push Brad Keselowski back into the lead. And that third lane's starting to work now. Jimmy Johnson in there. Remember we saw Jimmy Johnson in the wall. How about the 42? I had written off Kyle Larson. He's right back in the mix. Now the bottom is not organized. There's a big gap between second and third place. Could help the south side line if they can form up. Parker 
important guys that block by William Byron very important if you remember back to the Daytona July race when he threw a block in the lead on Keselowski and got wrecked well he looked at that and actually made a change inside that race car they put a faster steering box inside that race car so he could make moves just like he did there to get in front of that top line and control the front Keselowski Man. controlling the front as you just mentioned I feel like that anything could happen any moment these guys are really being aggressive right here, trying to get to this lead. They feel like they have the Stuart Haas guys broken up. This is their opportunity to take stake claim of this race. Suarez moving up on the outside of the 21 of Paul Menard. Suarez trying to give a shove it's to the 24 of William Byron. He's going to take the lead. Byron out front. Now Byron, if I'm him, I jump in front of that two when that two car comes. That bottom groove should come back to Byron. Tab Boyd, the spotter for young William Byron. How will that experience help this young driver stay in front of the pack at Talladega? Got to watch that outside line. But the, right now, the bottom groove seems to be closer together. Cars are tighter together. We got a third lane for him on the outside. That's going to play havoc a little Our bit court. on that inside line or that middle groove. Yeah, 300 cars up there in that top lane. Jimmy Johnson's in there. He's a lap down, trying to stay the first car one lap down to get the wave around. Let's listen in to Tad Boyd spotting way. for. That's perfect. He's going to ease back to the bottom. Spotting for Byron ease out back front. To the bottom. Perfect. Bounce your way. Nice. Stay in with the 19. Don't let him slip to the outside. There you go. Good everywhere. That's perfect. Nice work. Good by two here. That's two. Good at one and a half. Keselowski's coming quickly. Staying with the two. Staying with the two. Favor to the top. Stay with the 19. He's out there. Out there. Out there. He drugs the two back. Got a big run. That's all right. Still out there. 19. The 19 has no help. The two is with you. He's going to oh. boost you back. I thought Brown's That's getting good. tight there. You're clear. Clear. Pretty clear. Left. Stand with the two. Stand with the two. Stand with the two. With the Man, I really thought Brad Keselowski was going to get into the court panel in the 19, but got out of the gas just a little bit as running up on the leader of William Byron. Something similar to what we saw Stenhouse do in the July Daytona race when he got into How Bush. about this 20-year-old from Charlotte, William Byron, leading the field at Charlotte as we go NASCAR nonstop. separated themselves and now they're going to fight amongst themselves. Oh, we got a crash in the back here in turn four. Into turn four, up into the wall. The 23 is there as well as Alex Bowman in the 88. The caution will come out. I tried damage guys right rear. It's gonna go to overtime. You knew it was coming. You knew, you, you knew it had to happen. Pretty heavy right side damage. William Byron involved. Alex Bowman as well as that 23 of JJ Yaley and not something uncommon with these Hendrick Motorsports cars. We've seen this over and over. When they get three wide and get in these compromising positions, they become very difficult to drive, and the cars, you know, that's probably the seventh, eighth time we've seen a Hendrick Motorsports car do that over the last several years. So they continue to work on Alex Bowman's car. 188 laps, we have just passed that. Fuel definitely could be an issue. This Rack here brings us to an overtime situation. The restart when we return.